I have talked about this in the past. As you've seen in the title, it's the rice diet. And naturally, when you're going to start the rice diet, you're going to do an entire week only of potatoes. And that's how it got started. So three weeks ago, I'm like, something ain't working. I think I, that's right around when I made the video about the fact that I was adding like the fake meatballs and stuff into my diet for, for a while now, but not a ton. I mean, at most, I was bringing in... 20 ish grams of fat a day, like at most. But I got to thinking maybe it's just too processed or something like that and it's screwing up my body. So I started going into like, all right, what can I do? I really got to go back to my roots. I'm going to do only potatoes for a week and then I'm going to alternate rice and potatoes and see how that goes. That was the second week. The third week is what I'm in right now. I, I will go over this. I think I'm going to wait uh, for four weeks and then I'm going to kind of make a recap video. Uh, so stay tuned for that. There is three things that I wanted to talk about, especially with rice that uh, I really think people should know. There's one thing about potatoes I think people should know. So that is going to be in a couple minutes here. But I wanted to talk about what it's, what it's been like so far. So when I first got into it, I was doing potatoes only. The first day, was all right. The second day was all right. The third day, I did start having cravings again for like the fake meatballs. What One of the things I used to make was um, cabbage and we will get to rice. D don't worry. You know, like the macros of rice and the macros of potatoes is the exact same pretty much. Uh, other than potatoes actually have more nutrition than rice does, even if it's brown rice. As, uh, one of the things that I used to make was meatballs and onion and cabbage. And then I, it was kind of like whole cannon basically. So I stopped doing that. I, I had the urge. I didn't do it. I didn't do any of it. And it's, it's been, it's been good. I, it's been, now I did run into Easter and the only thing that I could find to eat at my parents' house on Easter, my mom said, oh yeah, I got potatoes downstairs. They were like a thousand years old. Like I'm like, these potatoes have been like, so anyway, so I had to have pasta and a can of sauce and a can of diced tomatoes. And I just made that that up it really it was a little bit more fat than the pasta or the, the potatoes and the rice but whatever so this is where the rice comes in so then the second week I started noticing that I was not having enough energy at all at all I was like what is going on and I realized that I just was not able to get in enough potatoes I don't have enough time to sit around and eat potatoes so and I was out for a walk Another thing that I've been doing through this whole thing is going out for walks, hikes, and bouncing on the Cellar Sizer. Link down below if you want to go check it out. That's the best rebounder I've ever found, and I've uh, reviewed a lot of them. So I've been starting my day off with the Cellar Sizer. I've been going through my day, and at the end of the day, I'll go for a walk. I don't how much long, how much time, I don't know. It really depends on the day, but this particular walk that I went for, I started having like my eye my vision started closing in and everything. I'm like, wow, I'm actually about to bonk here. This is ridiculous. So I came home and I had three dry, uh, dr three dry cups of rice in the rice cooker and I cooked that up and I ate the entire thing because I was just so low on glycogen. It was really bad. So I started combining the potatoes and the rice and that has been working really good. Now, I have been adding vegetables into the mix here, and I, I'm going to stop doing that. So once the vegetables are gone, and my definition of a vegetable, other than carrots, I don't think carrots are, are anything, but my ve definition of a vegetable is anything that doesn't have seeds in it. So like cucumber and tomato, those technically are a fruit. So is squash is a fruit. Um but I'm just going to keep it to actual what we think of fruits. So I bought a bunch of bananas and I bought a bunch of mangoes. So we'll see how that goes in this third week. So, but the, the second week, it went started going really good after I started adding in nightly rice uh, meals. Now, I may actually switch over solely to rice in the next couple of weeks here. We'll see how that goes. But I don't think there's a huge difference uh, digestion-wise between rice and potatoes. And the reason why is the reason we're here. The number one thing that you have to look out for is hydration. If you are not peeing clear, I don't really even think you should eat. If you are somebody who has digestion issues, if you're somebody who doesn't have digestion issues, maybe this isn't a thing for you, but I am somebody who has those issues. So if you are as well, 
make sure that you are fully hydrated. And I say this is for everybody, even if you have digestion issues or not, you should really be peeing clear before you eat. And that is one thing that I have really been uh, pretty strict with. Now, the days, the, the, the days that I haven't been strict with it is the days that I felt bloated, is the days that I felt just very sluggish, is the days that I felt just heavy. So make sure your hydration is down. Now, in the morning, I drink actually two liters of water, too. Sometimes two and a half, sometimes three liters as soon as I wake up. All right. So really start off the day. Now that means I'm not eating right away. Uh, I'm not always hungry in the morning. And the other thing that I've been allowing into this is juice because the rice diet includes uh, rice, fruit, fruit juice, and sugar. I have not had any, I had a little bit of sugar, but not, not a ton. So we're really just replicating the rice diet in macros using potatoes. Now, maybe by week four, I might actually, because I, I, like I said, I bought a bunch of uh, bananas and mangoes. Once those are ripe, I might cut out the potatoes. We'll see. On average, I've been going through about 25 to 30 pounds of potatoes and two to three dry cups of rice at night. Now, I don't know how many calories that is, and the calorie warriors are going to come on here. The one thing that I have noticed, and I'm, I've got two more uh, things that I really want to talk about in a couple seconds here. I have really noticed that the vegetables are giving me false, full signals. So I'll think I'm full and I'll go to bed and then I realize that I'm not full and I'm like, oh, yikes. So I, 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 th I that's why I said, I think I'm not going to waste them. I have them. They're upstairs. I'm not going to waste them, but anything that does not have seeds in it. Other than carrots, I've never noticed carrots that have any ill, anything on my diet or my digestion. Uh, anything that does not have seeds in it, I'm not going to include in the diet anymore. So that's like leeks, cabbage, you know, any cruciferous. I'm not going to have any of that kind of stuff. I'm not going to have any onions. I'm not going to have any of that stuff. I might even cut out like tomatoes and uh, cucumber and all that kind of, you know, thing, zucchini, all that. I th I might even cut that out. We'll see where this actually goes. I, I really want it to square this down. I want to see what's the best. I want to, I'm just going to, this is going to be a series that I'm actually going to do. I don't usually do series, but this is going to be the first of, I don't know, however many in this series, because I have noticed that my rice diet by and far videos are the most watched. And I really want to square this out. Now, I know he already did that, but uh, Walter Kempner, and you know, here we go. Here's the book. But uh, I know he already talked about that. He already perfected it. But most of the stuff was for people who had like fatal, fatal diseases. I, that is not my uh, situation here. So it's very low fat. I have not had any overt fats whatsoever this entire time. It has been nice. You've got to rinse off your rice, especially if you're somebody who has a rice cook. Any, anybody, you should rinse off your rice. If you have digestion issues, you should rinse off your rice. When you put, when you, if you've got a rice cooker and you put it in a bowl and you put water in there, it's going to cloud up. It's going to be all white, white and cloudy, right? You've got to get rid of that. Get rid of that cloud. Run the water through it until you are uh, seeing just clear water, and that's fine. And then you can put it in your rice cooker with the proper amount of water and hit the cook button, and you're done. I don't know, you know, some people might do this in the pan or in the Instant Pot for whatever reason. If you want to actually cook it legitimately, I always link down a rice cooker, the one that I use down in the description section. Another thing that I think everybody should be doing is... If you are going to do potatoes, I also think that you should be soaking your potatoes because that gets rid of the slimy starch that you get in a lot, or it'll get rid of some of the grain of potatoes that you'll see. Make sure that you're doing that. Make sure that, you, like, I, I cut my potatoes up, and sometimes I don't even cut them. Sometimes I'll just cut them in half or something like that, and I'll let them soak in water for an hour. And that really makes a noticeable uh, change, especially if you're making, like, mashed potatoes or fries or something like that. They're crisper fries, and they're much fluffier mashed potatoes. So it's definitely worth doing. The third thing that I wanted to talk about in this video is 
long grain, medium grain, and short grain rice. Now that is probably, if you're going to a rice, you know, like an Asian market, and there's this huge pallets of rice everywhere, you're gonna see all three kinds. There's also a fourth kind that I would stay away from unless you have a rice cooker, and it's very much an acquired taste. It's called sweet rice. Sweet rice cooks way differently than traditional rice. So if you don't have a rice cooker or a steamer, you're not gonna be able to cook this right, so don't even buy it. It's not sweeter, it has such a different taste. It's such a different taste. If you have a rice cooker, get a small bag of sweet rice. See if you actually like it. There is a, if you get the rice cooker that I have down below, there is actually a setting for sweet rice. Make sure that you use that setting, otherwise it won't come out right. Make sure that you like it because it is not like other rice and it is very sticky. So if you don't like sticky rice, you're not going to like sweet rice. So let's get back to the long grain is obviously longer and it's not as palatable. It is not as palatable. It's definitely the rice like a basmati or a jasmine, some some jasmines or there, there's just long grain variations of most rices. They're not great just by themselves. They're like something that you're going to put in a curry. There's something that you're going to put in some kind of dish. If you're, if you're wanting a rice that's going to go well in another dish, long grain is the grain that you might want to use. The grain that you're going to want to use most likely is medium grain. And even some uh, ja jasmine is considered medium grain. I don't really like it as much. Medium grain is where you're going to want to be. There's a couple really good brands. I'll show them. There's also short grain. And short grain is most well known for being for sushi. It's very sticky. It's actually very palatable. But if you have digestion issues, it might not be the best one to use. Really test that out. Definitely, uh, definitely make sure there's no clouding in it. And if you are still having digestion issues after all of this with rice, maybe try soaking it for an hour or even overnight before you cook it. Another thing that you can make is if you have a rice cooker, I don't know how you would do this without a rice cooker or a steam basket like they use in Asia, um, is uh, porridge. And what you would do is you'll take medium grain rice and you'll put it in the rice cooker and it'll have, it'll have the little lines that you're supposed to use. You basically use, like if you use a cup of uh, rice, you're gonna use like almost three cups of water <laughs> uh, in that, and it's gonna make kind of the consistency of uh, cream of rice, if you've ever had that. That's a really good way to start the day. If you're somebody that wakes up and you're automatically hungry, if you're somebody that wakes up and is already hydrated. I mean, I would definitely get get hydrated before you eat this, but the one good thing about porridge is it's got a lot of water in it already, so it does help with that hyd uh, hydration. I know a lot of Japanese people, I used to know actually a lot of Japanese personally, that they would always start off their day with porridge. Now they would have fish and, and other things with it, but the main portion of what they would eat in the morning would have been this porridge. So that is my three what you really should be doing with the fourth of the sweet rice. Like I said, you can usually buy little five pound bags, maybe even less of those. Make sure you like it before you go. Cause um, one of my last tips before I uh, end this video is, is buy in bulk, just go to an Asian market or sometimes Costco has really good ones. And actually the one I've got upstairs is from Costco, it's a 25 pound bag. You'll recognize it, it's a, like a white bag with a pink, um, like the top and bottom are pink and then the white. That is my suggestions on this. I've done this for a while. I've had a rice cooker for over 25 years now. That's so crazy. That's so crazy. I've had a rice cooker for like 25 years now. That's nuts. And I've only had two. And the brand, like I said, three times, four times is the one that I've got linked down below. So that's my suggestions. Hydration is key. If you're not hydrated, and I have noticed that when I cut out all that other processed stuff, and even like I've cut out corn and all the other grains other than rice, I have noticed a significantly better 
degree of being able to be hydrated without having to drink like four gallons of water. But I make sure I'm hydrated before I eat. And that has been definitely helpful in every aspect of this process. I don't think there's anything else I can add. Any comments, questions down below? What do you want to see me make in the next video uh, in regards to uh, the rice diet? What have I experienced? I have also read this book. I did a um, review of that book like two years ago. So go check that out. I'm not going to do another one. Actually, I think I've done two two reviews on this book. Now, now that I think about it. Anyway, comments, questions down below. Like, subscribe. And I'm going to make a series, like I said, of this because it's a very popular topic for such a simple idea. And I have definitely noticed that when you add in vegetables, it's not as good. And I can see why he cut out vegetables. I was kind of pro-vegetable in the beginning of this, and I've just noticed a false stomach receptor thing goes on when you have a lot of vegetables in your diet and it's just, it's false. It's kind of like aspartamine or whatever. It's false. It's not really happening. Yes. Anyway, talk to you in the next one.